Hello everyone, welcome back to Electronics Prepper, the channel where we try to learn as much as possible about electronics to become more self-reliant with technology and prepare for the future. Today is going to be a very short video. I made some experiments and I want to show you the results. This video is uh, inspired by um, one of my viewers who decided to um, email me and ask me a few questions. And because at some point I did not know exactly what to answer him, I decided to make some experiments of my own in order to, you know, better know what's going on. Um, it's about testing circuits on a breadboard, which we all do. Um, and it's about um, what influence, what negative influence the breadboard might have. More specifically, the parasitic capacitance that we might encounter while we are working on a breadboard, while we are, um, you know, placing components and especially wires between different uh, points on the breadboard. Since the breadboard is created with parallel lines that uh, conduct electricity, those parallel uh, plates, no matter how small they are, will basically form a capacitor. And that uh, capacitor will basically have a capacitance that normally we would not have in our circuit uh, and we will not have once we take the circuit out of the breadboard and onto a PCB or something like that. So this is what I wanted to see. How big um, of a negative influence does a breadboard do to our circuits? Okay. I've made some experiments beforehand so that I don't um, ask you to, you know, stay with me an entire hour while I, while I do the experiments. So we will be discussing them in a moment. Meanwhile, allow me to give you uh, some uh, good news. PCB Way, which is the sponsor of this video, is having uh, two more days of uh, significant Christmas uh, discounts. If you need help creating your PCBs, maybe even assembling them with components or perhaps building a device that needs a case and you would like that 3D printed or CNC machined, you can definitely rely on the quality services of PCBWay. To make things even better, they are offering up to 50% Christmas discounts that will go up until the very last day of this year. You might find that you can benefit from discounts on ordered PCBs, 3D printed objects or CNC machined ones, or perhaps some free Christmas coupons based on your order size. And they even have a lucky draw where you could win something uh, interesting, something useful by just clicking these virtual boxes on the screen. Go check out what they have to offer. The links are in the description below. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring the video. And now let me show you the experiments that I have done. And what results did I got. So that you know what's going to happen with your circuits on your own breadboards. So in order to test what happens, I thought of basically running some frequency response analysis with a more sophisticated um, oscilloscope that also has a signal generator and a frequency response analysis option i um, decided to basically create a simple circuit that uh, would uh, first not involve the breadboard and then later would involve a breadboard and um, see basically perform a low pass filter and see where the frequency changes and draw some conclusions about that. So first things first, I took a um, perforated board, a relatively small one like this. Um, she has about six centimeters from one end to another. And this will apparently have um, a negative impact on um, higher frequency as I will show you in a moment but anyway it matters less I have placed three uh, connectors 
the bottom left connector is where uh, our signal will come from the signal generator the top left connector needs to be connected to channel 1 of the oscilloscope and um, uh, top right connector needs to be connected to channel 2 of the oscilloscope all three connectors need to have a coaxial cable in order to have uh, small very small losses okay and what this board is is basically um, it's it's something like this dot here means device under test um, and for me this dot board is actually more of a generic board on top of which I can just add any circuit that I want to test okay uh, so we have common ground for all three connectors uh, we have the uh, the signal uh, input from the the signal connector goes also to the first channel um, input pin and normally there are there is no connection whatsoever between channel 1 and channel 2 um, however I have drawn some cables some some wires um, to come very very close to channel 1 so that here I have um, a couple of um, uh, mother pins and a couple of father pins so I can place um, um, a jumper you know and just connect uh, the two channels together and basically send signal um, from um, from the input all the way to the second channel as well and yeah the board is pretty much empty other than that so the first thing that we need to do is to test uh, this board uh, alone with a jumper set between the two channels just to see that we are getting a flat line ideally we should get a completely flat line all across the entire frequency spectrum okay this is the um, uh, the setup um, on a wider view so you see how uh, this uh, left cable comes from the back of the oscilloscope where my signal generator connectors are and I have here channel 1 and channel 2 okay and the frequency response analysis look a bit like this so I'm going to zoom uh, normally I should see um, a flat line and what we care about is the gain um, graphic not so much the phase graphic the gain is with blue so this blue line ideally should have been completely flat line all the way to the maximum frequency which for my device is 25 megahertz this is how much this uh, signal generator can go <clears throat> however we see that um, we have a flat line only up until 10 megahertz or so at 10 megahertz we have a one decibel amplification factor it's not that big of a deal, but above 10 megahertz, um, we seem to be experiencing quite a bit of an amplification. My best guess is that um, these wires, these metallic wires that connect uh, the two channels together, at higher frequencies start to behave uh, like, an, like an antenna or perhaps like uh, an LC circuit. I'm not very sure what's happening in here because I I, I really um, don't have radio frequency knowledge. That's something that I plan to learn um, into a more um, far away future. Anyway, the next experiments that we will have, we will have at lower frequencies. So the fact that we have a flat line up until 10 megahertz um, is good enough for us. Okay. So, that being said, this means that this setup can be used for lower frequencies and that whatever um, happens will happen because of whatever we are doing with this setup, like uh, attaching a different circuit, a different component, and so on and so forth. Okay, the next thing that we need to test in order to basically see if... Um, the following tests will uh, be accurate or will have some error um, is to essentially test so I don't, I don't yeah uh, you 
cannot see this clearly. So my oscilloscope says uh, he has a one megohm impedance in parallel with 16 picofarads capacitance. I'm assuming for uh, absolutely each uh, input. I mean, I know for sure that one megohm is for each input. I'm assuming 16 picofarads for um, each input as well. This means that if we if we are to place here instead of the jumper a uh, relatively large resistor like 100 kilo ohm one and um, input capacitance is truly 16 picofarads then this will be an um, an RC low pass filter it, it will become an RC low pass filter that's gonna you know attenuate frequencies above uh, roughly 100 kilohertz at least uh, you know if we calculate 1 over 2 pf um, 2 p r c r being the resistance 100 kilo ohm c being the capacitance 16 picofarads then we get about 100 kilohertz of cutoff frequency and if we run the frequency response analysis this is what we should get okay um, in order to simulate first this should be the graphic that we should see okay we have the 100 kilo ohm resistor that we have placed on the board one megohm from the uh, input of the oscilloscope and 16 picofarads and this is exactly what we see on the simulation because 100 kilo with one meg uh, form a voltage divider uh, the flat line is no longer at zero decibel but at minus 0 0.8 decibels and therefore the cutoff frequency will be the minus 3.8 decibel point uh, which should be something around here okay um, yeah about 100 and something kilohertz this is what we should see however this is the result that we get I have also put some cursors in order to have a more accurate, uh, you know, value. So cursor number two is at minus 0 0.8 decibel and um, it's in this flat line region, confirming that indeed we have a little bit of an attenuation and uh, by default and uh, the cursor number one is at minus 3.8 decibel and <laughs> what we see is that we have this frequency at 50, 15 kilohertz so not 100 but 15 kilohertz a lot lower than we expected so if we are to perform reverse calculations we get that uh, we have a capacitance of 106 picofarads which is probably not just uh, the input capacitance of the oscilloscope but also I don't know maybe capacitance of the um, coaxial cable maybe some other you know parasitic capacitances here I honestly did not expect it to have such huge parasitic capacitances in this very small and basic circuit but anyway this is what we got and we can easily um, verify that with a simulation, okay? By changing this to 106, we see that indeed the frequency has changed to some 15, 16 kilohertz. So yeah, this uh, verifies. Okay, so so far we haven't done um, we haven't done much. We have just uh, established a baseline for uh, all the following tests that we will do. And I will do two of them. So keeping this 100k resistor here, knowing that, you know, he generates a cutoff frequency of 15 kilohertz with whatever parasitic capacitances we have here, I have decided to add my breadboard, which is what I want to test, right? So I have taken uh, a couple of crocodile clips, uh, crocodile um, cables, one from the ground, one from um, uh, the output of this resistor. And at the end of these crocodile cables, I have placed uh, jumper wires to the breadboard. Of course, I have not created a short circuit with them, but rather I have 
place them on two different columns in parallel one column in parallel with the other because here is a place where we will basically get um, parasitic capacitance okay <clears throat> so with this setup i have run again of course the frequency response analysis and i got that the cutoff frequency associated with minus 3.8 decibel um, has lowered a bit at 14 kilohertz. So before we were at 15 kilohertz, now this cutoff frequency is at 14 kilohertz. If we do um, reverse calculations again, we find that the parasitic capacitance has gone up to 114 picofarads. So we have gained another 8 picofarads of parasitic capacitance and to see what happens even more i have decided to um, basically f <laughs> place eight different columns in parallel with each other to basically increase this parasitic capacitance okay the rest of the setup is the same and i have run the frequency response analysis again and the frequency has gone down once more to only 13 kilohertz in order to check if this is accurate i have run uh, a second test a second frequency response analysis but this time only between 1k and 100k of frequency just to have a better resolution and yeah, I, I basically got the same results. Cutoff frequency at 13 kilohertz, which again, performing reverse calculations, gives us a 122 picofarads of parasitic capacitance, which is 16 picofarads more than in our very first test when we had no breadboard whatsoever. Okay. And uh, to, to make sure that I get consistent results, I also perform this frequency response uh, with a narrow band without any um, breadboard whatsoever. And I got the same 15 kilohertz just like before. Okay, so my measurements do uh, verify in the end. So this is pretty much the conclusion that I can draw that it's uh, capacity uh, apparently this parasitic capacitance does not perform linearly does not happen linearly the more um, if for some reason uh, it's not like the more parallel lines we use then uh, the the bigger the capacitance is it does increase but um not in a linear fashion and also the this parasitic capacitance is in the order of picofarads to a few tens of picofarads okay whether this is um whether this will be a problem for you when you will be testing uh your uh, circuits or not that's up to you to decide it's up to you to establish because it depends a lot on what you do on the breadboard how big the circuit is of course the bigger the circuit then the more wires you will be using the more uh, surface you will be using and therefore more uh, metallic columns will be placed in parallel and will give you more parasitic capacitance of course this will be distributed across your entire circuit the smaller the circuit will be the less affected he will be um, and of course, the lower frequency you will be working with, the less this will matter to a point where at some point it won't matter at all at relatively low frequencies. Uh, the higher frequencies you want to work with on a breadboard, the bigger problems you will have. Okay. So that's about it. Um, it's a short video because the problem is relatively simple and had a, a simple set of experiments to be done i hope you have learned something new and it is useful to you this is going to be the last video for this year so um 
allow me to wish you a happy new year and may we all have a better year next year hopefully with uh, you know fewer problems and uh, more electronics more achievements and of course with uh, more health so thank you very much for uh, watching my channel thank you also to the supporters of this project on patreon um, like and a subscribe is free and helps the youtube algorithm to uh, you know um, promote my videos to other people who might want to learn what i have to show thank you very much and i will see you in the next video in the following year happy new year mm -hmm.